Good morning, coach, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for taking a few minutes here this morning. We'll get some questions on Zoom. We'll start first with uh, Bobby Manning. Hey, mate. Seems like one of the things you want to do with your opponents is wear them down, tire them out. I know that's something you kind of emphasized in the first two series here. Um, Giannis, Jalen was talking last night, just sort of has this, um, you know, extra win. He just keeps coming at you, sort of has that burst no matter, you know, what you throw at him there. But do you see moments where you kind of wear him down and tire him out the way you're attacking him? I think we saw that a, a few games ago, for sure. Um, you know, obviously some of the foul trouble and some of those things that happen are, could be due to fatigue. And we just... You know, similar to last series with Durant and Irving, uh, we want to put him in actions and make him work on both ends of the court. Um, the way he plays offensively, spends a lot of energy uh, going one on one, whether it's in the post or isolation. Not a lot of easy basket for him, other than when he gets out and transition some. So we just want to be conscious that to not let him off the hook on the other end defensively, and um, at times put him in certain actions. Knowing he's a solid defender, obviously, but uh, don't just want to let him rest on that end. Next up, Adam Himmelsbach. Hey, you may. I know you talked about um, after the Bucks won and everything to or sat there, guys. I'm sorry to attend the regular season. You guys had the choice, and you said it was kind of like a like a team agreement that you were going to go for it. Can you kind of walk us through any conversations that that you had and how that exactly transpired at the time? Well, it was a, it was a pretty short conversation. I think all of us. Uh, agreed that we want to play our best basketball and not try to ma manipulate anything. Uh, you know, they had a choice to play the last game and, and we did against Memphis. They didn't and it gave up the home court advantage. And so um, that's our benefit, obviously, going into a seven game series that we'll have a final game at home. But um, that's just the decision we had as a team. And, you know, kind of the message I want to send to our team is let's play it out. Um, take on whatever opponent comes and let the chips fall, fall where they may. And so that was the approach we had. Uh, I mentioned to the guys and it was a pretty short conversation. Like we're not going to try to avoid anybody or um, try to pick our own matchup. Um, we'll do what we do. We do what we've done all year, which has played great on the road uh, second half of the season. And so um, they made their choice with that. And listen, here's where we're at now. We'll have a home court advantage. Follow up with Adam. I know not much time has passed, obviously, since we talked to you last night, but I was wondering if you have any uh, idea about Rob's potential availability for Game 7. No, it will still be day-to-day. -day. Um, obviously, he'll get an extra day of rest now and get to look at it tomorrow. Um, but it's a pain tolerance thing. You know, the soreness, like I said, uh, swelling is down. It's just a matter of uh, extension and flexion, and uh, the pain is gone, basically, with the bone bruise. And so... Like I said, nothing structural. Uh, it's legitimately day to day, and how he feels tomorrow will determine if he plays or not. From Associated Press, Steve Magargi. I was just one trying to get your perspective. Why do you think the road teams have had so much success in this series, whether it be all in Milwaukee or the or the Bucks up there? Why do you think home court at this point hasn't mattered as much as maybe in some other series? <laughs> I'd say it's two teams that are, you know, semi evenly matched in certain ways. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a very competitive series. And so for them, championship pedigree, uh, they've been there, done that, and um, probably doesn't matter as much to them. And that's the approach we've had all year. Uh, we talked about it early in the season, you know, kind of having that world warrior mentality, go on the road and play well. And um, in the series, it's been, you know, both teams have lost twice at home, but very close games other than the first with, with for us at home and the second at home for us. Um, they've been evenly played games and came down to a possession or two at the end. And so for us, I've always tried to preach, uh, let's have that mentality us against the world on the road and embrace the challenge of playing in hostile environments. And, you know, I would assume Milwaukee with what they went through last year, have the experience of winning on the road and getting that championship. And for us, like I said, it doesn't phase us as much as some other teams. We embrace it and enjoy it almost to, to some extent going on the road and, and getting victories. John Corrales. You know, the the bounce back ability for this team is, is night and day from what it used to be at the beginning of the season. When did you start to see this team's potential to shake off 
the losses and shake off the bad performances? When did you first start to see that potential? Oh, well, it's it started to shift around the new year. Um, you know, the one game that does stand out is the New York loss, uh, giving up that big lead again in New York, and where we kind of all sat down and said, basically, enough is enough with the giving up leads. We're doing well enough to get these big advantages, and now we got to finish it out and bring home the victories. And so what we looked at as a coaching staff is how to finish games, uh, certain lineups, certain rotations, and certain plays that we can get to to help us uh, take those wins. And so the players took ownership as well, um, understanding how we've played it to that point, the leads that we did give up, and um, what we can do to avoid those. And so uh, taking our lumps early has benefited us for sure. We understand how to close it out. And when the games do get tight, we've had some um, tightly contested games toward the end of the season. Like I said, when we were having all the 20 point wins, um, that's not realistic basketball in the playoffs. And I think the end of game, end of season games that were tight uh, helped us in the playoffs. And so for us, it's, we've gotten these leads. Uh, let's figure out how to close out games now. Uh, like I said, we lost quite a few early in the season and um, those helped us for these times in the playoff and, and going forward. Follow up question from John. Has there been any any one particular player or, or anybody that, that that has stood out just in the um, pushing of of guys in, in those moments in those like when things could go one way or the other? Has has there been anybody that just has has stood out as the guy who wouldn't let that happen? I would say Al's been really vocal as far as you know that veteran leadership. He's he's been vocal. Marcus does in his own way, and then. You know, JT and JB have increased on the vocal side, um, but also on the court. And so it's a, it's a combination of everybody doing their own thing the way they do it. Um, obviously, we're going to push them hard in, in those moments. And like I said, we've learned from our past mistakes, but uh, it's kind of a collaborative effort with the team and guys doing their own thing the way they lead. Um, and at times, like I said, Jason and Jalen being a little more vocal, which has helped throughout the season. But uh, I would say the most consistent is probably Al, like, here we are, we're in this situation that's not let this happen. And a lot of times when I come back to the huddle and the timeout, Al, Marcus, and the guys that are more vocal are talking. Jared Weiss. Going back to that New York moment, you know, you said that you guys as a group talked about wanting to change things, but what did the, you know, the players took ownership, but what did they ask of you to make changes to like, whether it be personnel, scheme, style, like what, what did they demand? Well, we obviously made some changes at trade deadline, which helped, um, you know, certain rotations weren't, weren't being beneficial at the end of the games. And, you know, it wasn't due to anything on purpose. It was due to COVID injury situations where we were playing some lineups that probably weren't the best to finish games. And so they just asked me to continue to coach them hard and, and not let up and do what we've done at that point. Now it was on us as a coaching staff to kind of zero in on some offensive and defensive things. Um, to finish games more offensively because we were guarding at a pretty high level all year. It's just offensively, we had some lulls that allowed teams to get back into it. And so for us, it was looking at specifics and, okay, we, we like the movement. We like the uh, team play equal opportunity to some extent early in the game, but how can we get to certain uh, actions that will benefit us toward the end of the game? And we dug deep into that. I think we've tightened up our playbook, but the, co the players have asked us to continue to push them hard and, you know, not let up. So these things, stop happening final couple of questions first from Keith Smith coach it, it, I've heard over the years many coaches say by the time you get to game seven there's no real adjustments left everybody's kind of done that part of it. it do you do you think that's true is it more about effort and execution and what do you think that environment's going to be like tomorrow afternoon for game seven yeah I would say even you know before game seven we all know what each other is going to do um you know, it's not about the plays. It's about the players and tendencies and all the little things that we talked about last game, you know, the transition and, and offensive rebounding and taking care of the basketball, the things that kind of hurt us in the fourth quarter of last uh, of game five. And so at this point, we know everything they're going to do They and vice versa. Um, I do think you can still make adjustments on the fly and, you know, keep guys off balance. So that really doesn't stop in game, that, that coaching part of it, but um, really comes down to, who's going to play well at that time and, you know, some small tweaks you can make in game, but we know how then to answer your second part of your question is the garden's going to be rocking. It's been that since late in the season uh, when 
playoffs started to come around, you could feel the vibe and the energy and excitement with what we were doing. Obviously, Brooklyn series was its own thing and, you know, had some some personal aspects there. And so that was a crazy series. But uh, Milwaukee has probably been louder from every I, I kind of tune it out as a coach. I don't hear the, <laughs> the volume that everybody else talks about, but uh, people said it's been the loudest it's been in there um, early in this series. And obviously, game seven going into it uh, with what's on the line. Uh, we expect no le nothing less than that tomorrow. We'll wrap it up right there. Thank you, Coach, for your time.